Hello everyone, my name is Simon Skull and welcome back to our third part of our cannon shooting project. In this video we're gonna clean up some code and then we're gonna jump straight into creating our preview path for our bullet. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna jump into our cannonball script. We're gonna fix a line of code and that is the bounce physics. We are gonna comment this out because currently we are manually doing the math to calculate a reflection. Now, a better way of doing that is to use a built-in function. And that is a vector2, rather a normal, dot reflect. And then inside here, you just insert our movement. And that's all there is. And that's how it reflect the on the normal surface, using the incoming force of movement, or rather our incoming vector. So let's make sure this works. Let's take a look, and it does. But we forgot to multiply this with bounce, because if we don't, it will not reduce, it won't reduce the bounce. So let's hit play again, make sure it kind of behaves like a real life thing. And it does, until it stops. Good. Okay, that's that. Now let's jump into our cannon. Inside our cannon we can improve another line of math, and that is this line. Now this may be incredibly confusing, and I understand why. So I'm gonna comment this out, and I'll leave it there so you can take a look at it if you want, or... Yeah, so I'm gonna start by creating a variable, and that will be our radian variable. And this will be equal to deg2 red, and inside there we're gonna put our bullet angle. And this deg2 red bullet angle is the equal equivalent of bullet angle multiplied with pi divided by 180, which just converts this into a radian value. So we won't have to write this, we can just write deg2 red and then insert our angle directly there. So let's now set our new directional force. That will be equal to vector 2. And then we have to write cosinus rad, comma, sin rad. And then lastly, we're gonna multiply it with bullet speed, so we get the length of our vector. And that's that. Let's make sure it works while playing it again. And it does. Good. So let's now jump into creating our tool, so we can actually see the path of our bullet. And we're gonna do that inside our cannon script. On the top here, we're gonna make sure to write tool. And this line alone will make it so the script inside our cannon will run. So in order to get this to work, we're gonna create a few variables. I'm gonna start by creating our boolean that will determine whether or not we want to see the lines from within the game. Let's comment and write draw lines in game. Export bool bar preview in game. And by default I'm gonna set default because you probably don't want to see the lines by default in the game. You can always change export variables from the editor itself by selecting the node this is attached to. And then we're gonna create a preview info variable. Or rather, we're gonna create two of them. And the first one will be the length of our preview lines. So let's set preview line length. And that will, by default, be set equal to 5. Now, what you choose to set it as is really up to you, but I'm just gonna pick 5. And then we're gonna use set get in order to create our setter. So I'm gonna create a set preview line length function. Now below we're gonna create one more preview info variable, which is export int var preview line count. And this is the number of lines we're gonna draw. Then we're gonna set our setter, which is set preview line count. Now it's important to keep in mind that this line count can never exceed 59, because if it does, it will crash. This is also true for preview line length, however, it's a bit higher than 59. I'm not sure how high, because if you don't, the entire engine will crash. You just keep that in mind. I'm just gonna create a controller inside both of them to prevent line length from exceeding 100 and count 59. Now, the reason I picked 59 is because I tested this out, but I have not tested out the limit of our line lengths. I don't actually know that. Let's scroll down here and create our two functions. Let's create our func set preview line length and insert our value. And then we're gonna update our preview line length equals to, and this is important, clamp. This is to prevent it from going below a certain value and higher than a certain value. So I'm gonna clamp value to 0 and 100. This is just a random number, but just make sure this isn't too high. And then we're gonna run a command called update. And what this does is we have canvas item. 
and canvas item is inherited by node 2D and control node. And this canvas item allows us to draw on the screen. And what we want to draw inside here is draw a line in order to draw our line. And every time we make changes to say vector positions or variables or any other math that determines where we're going to draw our line, we need to make sure to run update in order to update our draw. Let's go back into our canon and let's create our func set preview line count. And inside here we can insert our value. Make sure to update our value preview line count equals value. Because if you don't do this, this won't actually change. Let's not forget to clamp this. Clamp our value between 0 and 59. And 59 was the value I tested out, so I know it should never see that. And why this happens, I have no idea. It's probably an engine bug, and I hope, hopefully it's noted down somewhere. Okay, so we already talked about what update do. It allows us to update our draw. I know that in order to calculate our path of the ball, we need to update also when we change our bullet angle and bullet speed and as well as the gravity. If you were to change the gravity from the editor, you have to update our draw as well to get the accurate result. So under bold angle, I'm gonna write update. And then I'm gonna create two more setters on speed and gravity. And that is done by writing set get, set bullet speed. And then set get, set bullet gravity. I'm just gonna copy this, I'm gonna scroll down, put it below here, and enter funk set bullet speed value and then set bullet speed to our value, and then run update. We also need to create our second setter, which is set bullet gravity. Set our value and do the same, and update. But here's the thing. We also need to make sure to update our directional force each time we change the gravity or speed, as well as angle. Actually, we don't need to change it when we change the gravity, because gravity is not we're not using any sort of gravity math inside there, so we don't have to do it here. But we have to do it in our angle and our speed. Because those variables are used inside this function, and this function is used to get our predictive path of our tool. So let's begin by creating our draw function. And this is the function that allows you to draw on the screen. I should probably comment the other functions as well, and I'll make sure to do that a bit later. So, inside our draw method, we want to preview our lines. We want to draw the lines on the screen. Now, I know we want to do it if our tree view is an editor hint. Then we will draw the lines. However, we also want to draw the line when it's not in the editor and our preview in game variable is true. So, we're gonna write an or preview in game is true. So, if we want to preview this in game, this entire thing will be true, because even though this is false, we are using an OR to check if this is true. So if either of these is true, we will run this code. So we're gonna start by getting our initial position, our, our start position. And that is a variable, start pass equals get node, and this is important to keep in mind. You need to use get node every time we want to reference nodes in our scene tree during editing using our tool script. It won't allow you to use variables that you have used to... Such as this, I cannot use our bullet spawn to get this. I need to use this and not this. So let's go back down here. Let's just paste in this here. And we want to get the position of that node. So I'm just gonna write dot get pass. And then we want to get the previous position. Or rather, set our start position as previous position in order to make this work correctly. Start in the first run. And that is set by using var prev pass equals start pass. Because we're gonna set our. We're gonna use our start position to calculate our next position. So we know in the beginning our previous position will be the start position. <laughs> It'll make more sense once we write the rest of the code here. So let's write our loop that will draw our lines. So for each tick in the range, one to preview line count. We're gonna draw a line. For each line count, we will draw one line for each count. So if we have five counts, five line counts, we'll draw five lines. So, first thing I'll do, I'm gonna create a random color. I'm gonna use randomize. And this is just so we can see the lines, each individual line. I'm gonna write var color equals color. And then I'm gonna use rand range. And I want a range from 0 0.3 to 1. Because if I were to use 0, 
it is a risk that there will be many dark lines which you can barely see any difference in. And then I'm gonna copy this two more times. Remove the last comma. And we now have a random color per line. Now what this does is it, it, it will create a more random, or rather it will create a random color each time we play. Because if this was not here, it would result into the same color each time I rotate play. So if it starts with red, and then blue, and then green, it's gonna be red, blue, and green every time I hit play. But with randomize, it may not be red, blue, and green. It may be green, green, and blue. Just something to keep in mind if you want a more random approach. Now I want to multiply our text with a preview length. And what a preview length really does is it tells us when in time we want to get our position. So if I were to draw, for example, this line here. Let's say this is 60 ticks, and this is 120 ticks. Now, I know in the physics behind our bullet, we are running fixed process, which means one second will be exactly 60 ticks. So if ticks is 60, it means that we want to know the value after one second. Now, this may be a bit confusing, and if you want to know more about this, I may make a separate math video where I can do some more explaining. However, we're gonna start with multiplying tick with preview length, if only I could write properly. So we're gonna get tick multiplied equal preview line length. And then we're gonna get our x and y positions. So we're gonna get the vector to end, or rather next position. So this is done by using the bullet physics. Well, not directly, but we're using the same bullet physics math. Now, we know in our bullet physics, in the x direction, which is left and right, or horizontal, we don't have any forces affecting it unless it were to directly hit something. But we won't take in account for hitting something, which is just gonna get a predictive path. So a var x would then be tick multiplied with directional force dot x. And that's all there is to it. Because after 60 ticks, which is one second, we will know the, uh, the, the distance using a directional force. So we'll know exactly where our x position is after one second, which is 6 ticks, or 2 seconds, which is 120 ticks, or something between. Now the reason I'm using 60 and 120 as examples is because it's a bit easier to imagine. Ticks is just times this kind of runs, or refreshes. So now we need to get our y position, and this is more complicated. So I'm gonna create a function called calc y position, and inside that I'm just gonna insert the tick, which is tick multiplied with preview length. So if the tick is in the beginning, we will have 1 times preview length. So if our length were to be 10, we would have 10 ticks. But before we jump into creating that function, I'm just going to create our next variables. And that will be our next position, which is equal to start position, plus our new x and y, which is a vector 2, and then x and y. And now we're going to draw our line, which is done by using draw line. Inside, I'm going to insert our previous position, our from, our next position, which is 2, and then we're going to insert our random color. You can, of course, optionally write a width. So if you want a really thick line, you can just write a big number. But I'm not going to do that. Lastly, we have to update our previous position. That is done by writing priv pass equals next pass, because our next pass is now on the next run, our previous position, and then we will keep going. And that's all for draw. Now we have to create our last function, and that is our calc y position. And this is frankly the probably the most difficult part of our tool tutorial here. So let's create a func calc y pause and take in our ticks. Inside there, we're gonna make run this recursively, and that is because we want to calculate a more complex physics which affects the cannonball. Because our cannonball affects gravity over time, which means our cannonball will increase the gravity over time, which means I know to know the exact value on each and every tick up to that point in time. And that may be confusing to you, and I apologize if it is. If you really want to know more about it, ask me in the comments and I might consider it if enough people want to do so. Or rather, if more people want me to do so. So I will do my best to explain this recursive function. A recursive function is basically a function that runs into itself. So if ticks is not zero, because we want to go back in time, if we start at ticks equal, say, two ticks, we need to know the value of our tick at position 0, 1, and 1, in order to know 2. Because you cannot find out our 2 without knowing what our 1 is. So if our 1 is 5 and 0 is 2, you need to know that 2 is equal 5 plus 2 and plus something. <laughs> That's probably a horrible explanation, I apologize. Let me just create 
the function and hopefully you should get a greater intuition of how it really works. But if you want me to explain this further, please let me know. So inside our own calc y position, I'm gonna enter x minus 1 because we want to go back in time. And then we are going to plus our force. That depends on where we are in that time. In order to calculate a y position, depending on number of ticks, we're gonna use a directional directional what's going what's wrong hmm oh my bad there we go so in order to calculate our forces in the y axis we're gonna use directional force y we're gonna plus it with ticks divided by 60.0 so we get a float value because if we don't do this and only have divided by 60 we'll get an integer value and it won't be accurate so make sure to write 60.0 in order to get a float value out of this and that is going to be multiplied by gravity because our gravity is affected over time so if our time is for example a accumulated one second this will be one and one times gravity we will have the affected y value and then we're gonna plus the force so if you take a look at our cannonball script here, inside fixed process, we see we, have, we are simulating gravity by multiplying gravity and delta and then adding it up on y. And this is the reason we are creating a recursive function. Because we need to know what, what this value is to begin with, because this adds up top of each other. We can't just, as far as I know, we can't just pick a point and calculate the value without the previous values. Now. If ticks is not zero, we are going to dive in further in until we reach zero. So if ticks is zero, we're gonna return zero. Because that will be our start time when when in the beginning of our path. So when ticks is zero, that means we're gonna be exactly here at our spawn point, and we need to know the value here. So if for example ticks is 60, and that, let's say one second is about here, it's gonna calculate the the y position at 60 seconds. So, let's make sure this works. What did I do wrong? Gravity. Oh, my bad. Bullet gravity. There we go. Now it should hopefully works. Yeah. Perfect. We now have an arc with different colors. We can actually see each line individually. Now, I believe we have 10 lines. Yes, we have 10 lines and each line have five ticks in width. So if each had one tick in width, they are pretty damn short. So if I were to increase our bullet speed, these lines would also increase. So if they are 40, it means after... Mm, after 10 ticks in total, which is <laughs> 10 divided by 60 of a second, it's gonna be there. So this is gonna be really fast now. Yeah. <laughs> so let's take that back to 8 here. So I'm gonna press this refresh button here. Let's increase our line length. And you can see we get a more predictive path, of course, until it hits a wall. Let's make sure everything works by changing our angle. Let's try 30. Let's see if that works. In fact, let's make sure to preview in game here so you can actually see it. There we go. Perfect, it seems to work. Let's try 7... 220. Oh boy. That's gonna be all wrong. <laughs> but yeah, it appears to be working. Let's increase our gravity a bit. Let's try 10. Let's change the direction to 340. Yeah, perfect. This seems to be working exactly as intended. And that concludes our third part. In our fourth part, we're gonna finish this off by creating a simple dummy that we can shoot and take hit points off. I will make sure to add the source code in the description from the beginning of the tutorial as well as our end of the tutorial. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to support the channel and like the video if you want to see more videos. Bye bye.